Hey guys, guess what I got? Yay. Baker Creek Seeds came today. I'm super excited. So this year we ordered like twice the amount of seeds that we usually order or like ever need because Baker Creek ran a fundraiser to um, help Ukrainian refugees um, for humanitarian aid to help them with food, shelter, water, that kind of thing. Um, they raised $1.6 million. 100% of the proceeds of the seed sales went to uh, the, the humanitarian aid. So here we go. We're going to open this up and there's a couple of surprise seed packets in here, but I'm going to show you what we got. Here we go. Better have my hot peppers. <laughs> we do. We do. We ordered three different hot peppers, so I'm going to show you guys what we got. I get to go nuts. <laughs> yeah. We got to get these we got to get these started too because it is already March. We need to clean First thing, table. we have Indian coriander. I don't I'm, even know what that is. It's cilantro, but it bolts pretty quickly and it's extremely fragrant. So next, we got a bunch, so we got to move quick. We have cardoons. I don't know what the frick I'm going to do with cardoons, but they taste like artichokes and they're really ornamental. So we're going to find out. Dip. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll taste good with dip. Definitely. Um, they're perfect for that. So I've been super excited about these. These are Sugar Rush Peach uh, Hot Peppers. And they're supposed to be um, hotter than a jalapeno, not as hot as a habanero. And you know how much I love my habaneros, guys. And they look like fingers. <laughs> they don't look like fingers. They do too. They look like grandma's fingers. They don't look like... They look okay. like grandma's fingers. They're going to be delicious. I've, I've wanted these for years and I've never grown them, but I'm really good at growing hot peppers, so we're going to try them out. Not as good as me. Nothing's as good as you, baby. Nope. Tim's Except the best. Bacon. Except bacon. Bacon's better. <sighs> I miss bacon. Don't make me sad. I won't make you sad. Okay, so here we go. We have a Chinese cabbage. This is a Napa style cabbage. Um, this kind is Hilton, which is a variety I haven't grown before. It's fairly small. It only takes up one square foot, so I'll be able to grow plenty of it. Uh, check it out. Vegeta killed Napa. <laughs> okay, here we go. We've got some, some bouquet dill. Um, so I'll be using this one for my pickles. Yeah, yeah. Don't we? Mm-hmm. Definitely growing some, uh, growing some pickles. pickles. <laughs> yeah, we're going to grow pickles. Oh my God, if they came Making some pickles. Right, pre-pickled. They wouldn't come out of the garden. <laughs> They'd never make it past the garden. We'd be out there eating them straight from the dirt. Nom, nom. Why do that in? Right, well, yeah, uh, I mean, whatever makes it past the garden anyway. It's good. It's lucky to make it to the hose, right? Okay, so here we have some uh, Pacific Beauty Mix Calendula. And Calendula. not only... <laughs> Not only is this gorgeous, but it helps trap aphids away from some of our other edibles. It's edible, it's medicinal, and... Um, and they keep the ants busy. Okay. Yeah, it does. It, it keeps the ants busy. They're, they're busy farming aphids on, on our flowers instead of farming them on our other vegetables. So, um, I love this mix. It's my favorite. They are pretty. They are pretty. Caligula is. They pretty. smell good too. Okay, here we have some lemon bee balm. This one smells a little less medicinal than um, the the typical um, bee balm, which is you know wild bergamot. Um, it actually grows wild here in Missouri. This is a little bit more uh, ornamental um, and fragrant. So uh, we're growing this for. The hummingbirds and the butterflies and the bees, but we're also growing it, keeps it the bees for. Happy. They don't. They it, don't uh, sting us. It does keep the bees happy, but we're growing it for tea for us, and maybe the hummingbirds for you. because you know we love the hummingbirds. I'm not making tea out of a hummingbird. <laughs> no, we're not making tea out of hummingbirds. Thank you, Tim, for your input. And this is one of my favorite squashes to grow here because we have a huge issue with squash bugs and squash vine, vine borer. Um, 
So gray squash is a little bit, it grows quickly and it's a little bit more resistant to squash vine borer. Um, the, the vine itself is firmer and um, the, the zucchini itself, they're, they're nice little tender fruits. Um, they get, they get about yay big when they're, when they're ready and ripe. Um, they can, they can get big just like any zucchini, but they get about this big when they're ready and it only takes a couple of days, just boom, like that. And they're really prolific. Um, we love them. I grew them last year and I mean, our, our vine actually got infected. Um, I, I cut them, I cut the butt, I cut the larva out and uh, we still had problems with it, but it was a champ. It kept going and kept going and kept going for a couple of months after that. We had so many squash. We had no... Oh, my goodness. What's next? What's oh. next? A surprise seed. We're going... What's a surprise seed? Oh, my gosh. Japanese wasabi radishes. You oh, boy. boy! Yes. So, wasabi. check this oh, out. Snap. Oh, snap. Japanese wasabi radishes. I wanted to order this and I was like, I gotta stop. I gotta stop. This the is too much. Provides. The universe provides indeed. Um, so I've never grown this one. I um, really wanted to. I, I want love to myself some spicy radishes. I want to be in charge of the radishes. Okay, these are Tim's radishes. He gets to be in charge. Thank you. We always grow a few kinds of radishes every year. Um, so th that's, that's Tim's little project. He loves to grow variety. So... Here we go. We're going to try them. Thank you, Baker Creek. What's up, man? You granted my wishes. All right. Lots more to go. Here we go. Uh, we have sugar magnolia tendril peas. And this is a purple sugar snap pea. Tentacles. I've never grown them before. They're a fairly new uh, variety, but I'm excited. They're, they, they look really cool. So... We We're going to do it. Tentacles last year, too. <laughs> tentacles. Okay, next. Ground cherries. New Hanover. These are supposed to be a little sweeter than your usual variety. So, um, they taste kind of like a uh, pineapple with a little bit of um, a wild aftertaste. They're related to tomatoes and eggplants and things like that. Um, and, um, and tomatillos. They're all... Um, you can eat them raw, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can. You can eat these raw. You don't have to cook them. That means them. they're snacks they're all, uh, all around there. Nightshade family else. plants, though. So that means they're snacks. They're all around they're all sold. Yes, they are snacks. They never make it into the house. So I got something I've been wanting to grow uh, for years. I grow okra every year, but I got Jing Orange this time. Um, this one that? is an Asian variety, and it it grows big six inch pods that that bear pretty early, but they're a, they're a reddish orange instead of green. Or purple. You've seen purple ochre, right? So, here we go. Or if you haven't. That's Beep. <laughs> oh, sorry. Beep. Yep. We're going to have to cut that one. Okay, so here we go. Here's my, my baby. Chocolate habaneros. We're going to grow these this year. You're I, my peppers. I love hot peppers. So does Tim. Um... I absolutely adore hot peppers, and Tim's going to be doing a lot, of, a lot of the gardening anyway, so I say they're mine, but they're they're going to be Tim's babies. I get to play in that Because dirt. I, yeah, <laughs> you see, I don't, uh, I don't get to do a lot of the things I'd love to do. Um, I did this, uh, <laughs> Tim breathed, and it fell out, so, yeah. Loads of fun. Okay, so here we go. It looks like this is a free packet of... I don't know what. Oh, no, this is one of mine. Takanashi uh, turnips. They're a little tiny white turnip. It doesn't show the picture on the packet, but it's a, it's a little white turnip that is mild. It's an Asian turnip. They're delicious. Um, I like to cook with them. Like I like to put them in, and, in beef stew and what whatnot. Like turnips um, and radishes had a baby. Yeah, yeah, they're they're almost radishy. Now here is <laughs> some free seed. Um, I'm not. Oh, Tim's gonna love this. Please. It's another hot pepper. We have datil, um 
hot peppers, capsicum chinins. It's a blazing hot little uh, orange yellow hot pepper, and it's a vicious heat kind of pepper. So I have to use gloves this year. Yeah, definitely. We're gonna blast Tim's face off. That's hard to do. This is like my level of heat hot pepper. Really? You know, uh, <laughs> no habaneros are habaneros are my ketchup. So yes, this is this is gonna be fun. Uh, I'm, I'm, hot is ghost pepper to me. That's like my hot sauce, so. Ghost pepper is the way to I'm go. I'm so excited. Ghost pepper is the way. Definitely. Here are the sunflowers that I ordered ah, to plant. They're fantasia. Protest. I'm going to grow this. I'm going to grow those. We're going to grow every one of these. And they're going to be huge. They, they're, they're going to be, um, they're actually a fairly short, uh, plant. They, they don't get like super, super tall. But if they get like six foot tall, but, that means I was feeding them the stools. <laughs> we're going to grow them as big as they go. So these are for Ukraine. These are for you, Ukrainians. Yeah. Woo, woo. We we are in solidarity with you. Um, Putin, yeah. go, go suck a toe. You're an absolute cabbage. Put these in your pockets. What's next? Did what my, is did next? I get my Carolina Reapers? These are black king pansies. I love black flowers. I'm totally going to grow a goth garden someday when I have more room. Um, my landlady loves me to death. I get to grow whatever I want, pretty much wherever I want. She just wants a pretty yard, so um, yeah. The we upstairs the, neighbors don't yeah. care. I get the yard. We have the prettiest so, yard. So we're going to have black flowers this year <laughs> for salads and, and nobody pretties. nobody messes with our stuff. Yeah, nobody ever messes with it. You know, you think we don't have a fence or anything. Everybody's like, ooh, pretty yard. What's that? What's that? Ooh, that so, looks like an apple. Let's eat it. <laughs> nobody eats anything. We should plant stuff. That looks so like an we bought some um, Munstead strain lavender, which is a cold hardy lavender that will grow perennially in our zone. We are 6B where we're at. So uh, we're in this little pocket. Um, so I'm excited to grow this. We've, we've got lots to... Is there more? There's tons more. Really? Uh-huh. So, this year, black nebula carrots. We are going to grow the darkest carrot there is. These are the most purple carrot you can buy. It will stain you like beets do. So, beets and carrots can't be. <laughs> no, they don't taste like beets. Okay. The 18 jour... This is a very fast-growing uh, carrot. It's named, uh, it's, it's a French-type carrot. It's an heirloom. In ideal conditions, it grows, like its name states, in 18 days. It's Missouri. It's not going to grow in 18 days, but it'll grow in less than a month. We're happy to grow it. We love radishes. Radishes. We like spicy, if you can't tell. Radishes. Forage. Now, this is one of my favorite little flowers because it tastes like cucumber. I love to put it in ice water and smash it up. Just a couple of flowers. Um, put too many. It tastes like something I'd rather not mention. But it tastes like cucumbers. Here's something new I'm going to try. Lemon basil. Um, it's uh, supposed to be a, a, an intense lemony fragrance, um, but kind of light on the lemony flavor. They use it a lot in Asian cuisines, especially Thai, Vietnamese, things like that, where you might use um, Thai basil. That would go in um, goodness. So, that would go good on a roast. Mm, as a rub. Ooh, yeah, that would go good as on a roast. Rub. Definitely. So we've got some dino kale, as it's called, the Nero di Tos Toscana. As you tell, I don't speak Italian or French. I wish I knew. Um, I wish I knew but this is an Italian heirloom. Words. It dates back to the 1820s, and it's it's like a black green, and they get huge, and they get really tall. They start looking like palm trees. Um, it just keeps going and going until it gets really hot, and it's fantastic for kale chips. It kind of looks like a palm we, tree. We use we use cashew butter and um, nutritional yeast and a couple other ingredients, uh, red bell peppers, and we make amazing tasting nacho cheese flavored kale chips. There's no che actual cheese or anything in it, but it totally tastes like it. It is... Even I like them. Even, even my um, carnivorous, <laughs> omnivorous, uh, meat-loving, cheese-loving uh, partner in crime here, Tim, he loves these. So don't worry if you're not vegetarian, if you're not vegan, 
it still tastes amazing. Yes. So moving yes. on, we have lemon balm, but this is something completely different. I've never seen this before. It's mandarina lemon balm, and it's supposed to taste like an orange. Um, and it's perennial in our zone, uh, zones four to nine. It's infused with the scent and flavor of mandarin orange. It's a uh, ground crawling lemon balm. So it's supposed to be um, kind of like a ground cover. It, it, it only gets six to 12 inches. So you couldn't really use it like a lawn cover or anything, mm. but it'd be great in um, flower beds for in between some of your flowers to fill, kind of fill in those spaces make that that really good garden fragrance and amazing tea and it still has the medicinal properties that lemon balm does so we are not done yet i know we're not done yet <laughs> oh uh, i'm not talking to you tim i'm talking I to know. my friends here i'm talking to you i am gonna go have a cigarette so if you come across any kick butt peppers put them back and wait for me okay i will and quit smoking it's terrible for you no. so next we have lime basil I grow lots of basil every year, several different varieties. I still have a few more to buy. I'm going to get some purple basil, opal basil like I always do, but I ran out of time. I had to make it under the wire before midnight, and I made it two minutes and ten seconds to go. Twins so, basil. Twins basil. Okay, <laughs> we have lime basil, and it's kind of the same idea as lemon basil, but this is amazing, amazing in pad thai and, um, you know, a... Thai dishes, Vietnamese dishes. Perfect. I am going to have so much fun with this one. Okay, we have lemongrass, again, with the Southeast Asian food. <laughs> I love, I love Southeast Asian food. I can't help myself. It is delish. Um, check it. I love growing this stuff. It makes a beautiful, beautiful landscaping plant it doesn't always come back in this growing zone unfortunately but that's okay you can always save some put it back in the fridge if you baby it you might be able if you keep the roots on and everything or keep it in water keep keep a piece in the water over the overwinter it you might be able to put it back out and it'll reroot and it'll grow a whole new plant so Okay, next we've got Chiogia beets, and this is an old Italian heirloom. Check them out. They look like a bullseye, and they're a lot sweeter than just regular, um, your regular red beets. They are almost as sweet as a white sugar beet. They're delicious. They're, they are the candy of the earth. My, my kiddo loves them. I've never seen a kid who would eat beets. This kid, that's their favorite vegetable. I swear. I swear it all my life. Beets are this child's favorite vegetable. And this is why. Okay. Next we have beans. Blahild beans. And they are a flat German heirloom that is tolerant to mosaic virus. Check these out. Um, they're, uh, they're, they're like green beans, um, except they're purple. So I'm going to have a very colorful garden this year, orange and purple and, um, red and just lots, well, lots of orange and purple, really. I love purple plants, black, just, yeah, just give me the color. Here we have my favorite flower. This one has my heart nasturtiums you can eat them you can pickle the seeds like capers i got the tall trailing mix i trellis these they love to grow everywhere and these are the ones that really put out the seeds um check it this is a multicolor mix so you kind of get a little bit of everything and when you save the seeds and grow them they'll they'll cross pollinate they'll make new colors nasturtiums They'll carry uh, dormant genes and express new colors all the time when they when they breed like this. Yet they usually don't go sterile either. They'll just keep they'll keep going and it's They're really just colorful, weird. Flowers. Sometimes you'll get frills after a couple of generations, and I mean just they're just amazing. And the 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 leaves the leaves 
they they look like lily pads. I could go on forever. Hyper it's just, yeah, this is my favorite flower. And the vines on this kind, they get huge. So I'm excited. I'm beyond excited. They're very pretty. They are. They are pretty. So I'm growing these. They're a bread seed type poppy. This is frosted salmon. And this year, this is, this is kind of a happy, sad thing because I'm going to grow these because I need seeds for bread, for my gluten-free bread. Um, I make an artisan bread, but also for uh, bagels, you know, putting on your food, whatever. Um, but also there's been a lot of losses this year. I lost several friends. I just lost my neighbor, uh, last night to COVID. We've, we've lost several people to COVID and to other illnesses. Um, we lost a, a friend to cancer. Uh, we lost our landlord, uh, to cancer. Um, so I'm planting poppies for the dead. And I decided to plant this beautiful ornamental poppy. So not only is it something, uh, something gorgeous, but something functional, of course, too. Um, so we're we're gonna we're gonna plant it um so many seeds. actually where we where we buried our our cat that we lost this year yep. um our beautiful salik he was a, a black cat that was um he was my companion for 12 years all right moving on uh we have our our least hot pepper ancho peppers um also known as poblanos just check it it's a uh, regular all right so we started a new video I talked on too long because we have so many seeds. Um, check this out. We have. We have a part two. Mm -hmm. we, we do. We have a part two because I talk too much. Um, we're almost done though. Pink celery. Check this out. It is a Chinese celery. They come in white and pink. They're a little thinner than your uh, traditional celery that you think of. Um, but it's an eye-catching celery. It's so gorgeous. Uh, some people think it looks a little like rhubarb. Um, I think red celery looks more like rhubarb, but opinions, people have them. Some people have wrong ones. It's whatever. <laughs> it looks like rhubarb. But I think this one, and, uh, the package agrees with me, I think it's like, you know, bubblegum pink. So, um, it's fun. Here we go. Um. Purple lady bok choy. Check it out. Lots of purple vegetables. <laughs> uh, this one's a small one. It was it was uh, bred to be, you know, just a little bigger than most, uh, well, Asian folks' hands. I have big man hands. <laughs> um, so it'll start. probably be... You got a good start on your goth garden. I do have a good start on my goth garden, don't I? You do. I have I have tons of, of gorgeous colors. All right, here we go. Japanese Minuase Daikon. We grow daikon every year. Um, I haven't tried this variety, so we're going to see how it goes. That's kind of a funny shape on there. Um, uh, but these can get up to two feet long. I don't think our beds are deep enough with the clay that's underneath of them. We have raised beds. You know, if it's a real daikon radish, it'll just force I'm hoping through. that these guys are strong enough to break up some of that clay soil for us. We put a lot of organic matter in there, so here's hoping. Um, next, we have pink bananas. And this is just because I'm insane. I'm going to try to grow bananas. Um, we'll have to bring them in, you know, in the winter because it takes them 12 to 15 months to actually fruit. So the, the summer will be great for them. It's nice and moist here. We're near three rivers, uh, but are they actually bananas. Yeah, they're real bananas. They have they have a lot of seeds though. Um, they are an edible banana. When they're ripe, they're very sweet. They're like a dessert banana. Here, check them out. Take a look at the pack. While I dig out more. Seeds. Oh, like, wait. Nope. Like a that's it. That looks like a flower. We crop. only got one free seed, but now my memory okay, just we sucks. Got a really awesome free seed. We did so. get an awesome free seed. Where's my scorpion peppers? I didn't buy any scorpion peppers, my dear. Aww. That was it. Aww. Okay, the end. Twenty-five minutes of 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 me talking on about all the seeds, but so 
this is my, this is proof of my insanity and devotion to growing all the things. I, I will grow all the things. Someday I am going to grow a vanilla planifolia plant, a vanilla orchid, and um, ferment my own vanilla beans just because I can. <laughs> hey, peace out, guys. Thanks huh. for putting up with me in the background. Yep, that's it. That's all we got today. But I just wanted to show you um, the seeds and uh, what we what we ordered to put in our garden this year, and um, how how we helped uh, Ukraine. It the order ended up coming out to one hundred and nine dollars, which really that's not very much, but it's it's what we could do. And thanks for watching part one and two of the madness. <laughs> hopefully you get to part two. Yeah. Hopefully you got, hopefully we don't have to do this again. I uh, hate making a take two. Peace.